We'll be going, sir, we'll be going this direction. Got it. L shape. Thank you. Mr. DePinto, welcome. Uh, good morning, Chairman Bloom. Good morning, committee members. Uh, I'm Dave DePinto. I'm with the SAFE Coalition, president of one of the largest homeowner associations in the city of Los Angeles in the northeast San Fernando Valley. I'll start with our answer to the fundamental question of whether the project warrants additional oversight. Yes, it needs oversight for budgets, timelines, public outreach, and environmental integrity. Oversight is needed relative to adherence and in the integrity of the NEPA, CEQA, and the authority's own SAA report process. Remember the adage, a lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. We believe present oversight lacks the bandwidth and resources to keep tabs on what's now a $21 billion organization. We ask Northern Californians to pay attention. Without greater oversight, here's what happened to us and here's what you can expect. You'll read about routes and route changes in the mail. We just heard about enormous development from Mr. Richard in station communities. Many of us don't seek that. You'll receive permit to enter letters on Christmas Eve. We're getting them right now in our communities again with no advance notice. You'll receive no response to your comment letters and testimony at public hearings. You'll not be allowed to speak at authority-sponsored outreach meetings. You'll experience filibusters at public meetings by authority spokespersons. You'll be patronized by false optimistic timelines for environmental studies. And there'll be a lack of information and conf confusion regarding alter route alternative decisions. The only communication we've had from the authority since the June 15th, June 2015 board meeting was a notice that all community outreach for the balance of 2015 had been canceled and it hasn't continued into 2016 either. Three weeks ago at a San Fernando Valley COG meeting, the authority announced new route changes. Yet even with a board meeting scheduled next week in Anaheim, the SAA report explaining those route changes is not public information. That report will lack the input as a result from the public and elected officials who unanimously oppose what we refer to as the above ground routes. I'll wager $21 billion that the authority will approve or take no action on that SAA report and let staff move forward unchecked. The case study that I will share with you is the obvious conflict of interest created by the authority by engaging the Mineta Transportation Institute to conduct an equine study. This is not an indictment of Mineta. This is a mistake made by the High Speed Rail Authority that they will not admit and they will not undo. This study is now part of the NEPA, sequent and SAA processes and is being used to unfairly justify the route that Frank is going to just give you a quick look at. This is the Big Tonga Wash, which connects the San Gabriel Mountains with the San Fernando Valley and the Los Angeles River. It includes the Tahunga Ponds Mitigation Area, Haynes Canyon Creek, LA's drinking water, hundreds of multi-purpose trails, wildlife, and the endangered Santa Ana sucker fish. It's no place for a viaduct, five to ten years of damaging construction, or five more years of environmental study. It's a showstopper. It's a fatal flaw. Assemblyman Bloom, our big Tonga wash, as we talked about, is our Santa Monica Bay. Assemblyman Gordon, the big Tonga wash, is our Pescadero State Beach, the Palo Alto Baylands Preserve, and Tomcat Ranch. Assemblyman Obernolte, can you imagine this? at Big Bear Lake or the Mojave National Preserve. Assemblyman Patterson, this area is on a par with your beautiful Sierra National Forest. The Mineta Equine Study is mere desktop research, no field research. It's already been rejected by the Los Angeles Equine Advisory Committee, several veterinarians with equine expertise, and our own 11-page critique, a copy of which I'll submit. This study and several others were supposed to have been developed collaboratively and independently. The board voted unanimously to do that at their June 2015 board meeting. Dan Richard promised ongoing updates, in particular on their website. They failed to do this. Upset as we were, on December 3rd of 2015, we realized we had a bigger problem. We identified at least four Mineta Board of Trustee members with conflicts of interest with the uh, High Speed Rail Authority. These include the current authority CEO, two highly paid contractors, and a former authority chairman and board member. Our equine community never had a chance. 
the Mineta study is a biased, incomplete, and erroneous study being used to justify the route you just looked at within the environmental review process. We don't think this is the way to conduct business, particularly by the state of California. Have you ever seen a greater outcry in the state of California against a project for more oversight? Members, we suggest you focus very carefully, not on whether to increase oversight, but by how much and with what specific metrics and measurable guidelines. The authority should not receive special treatment and social promotion like a favored child. An overhaul may be more appropriate. If environmental oversight is not your immediate and specific purview, uh, committee members, despite the nexus that these protracted studies have with your costs, please enlist the, the oversight capabilities of the appropriate committee. Thank you.